Good evening, EC. Thank you for joining us this evening. And though we are the church scattered, we're still the church together. We're still connected. I personally want to thank you for your support and allowing us to be able to come to you uh, in this fashion, using technology for such a time as this in this pandemic as we're fighting uh, COVID-19. You have been so kind and so generous in your tithe and offering and your seed planting. We couldn't do it without you. And just know that it takes resources to continue to keep our production team up and to keep them moving forward with us. And it is because of you that we're able to do that. And again, from my heart to your heart, I want to say thank you and appreciate you so much. We don't know when we're going to gather again. As you know, the numbers are spiking and we're in a mandatory um, wearing mask. So save a life, wear a mask and uh, know that that helps flatten the curve and it helps slow the spread of the virus down. Um, I want to say that nobody can reward you like God. And so continue to support us because you have a harvest that's certainly coming with all of the resources that you're providing for us to continue to do ministry like we're doing it. I want to share some things with you this evening that's on my heart. And for the next few weeks, as we are walking through so much in this turbulent time, and uh, there's been some things on my heart that um, I and the Lord have been talking about, and everybody's got a lot on their plate right now. I understand that. And the question I'd like to ask you is, what do you see today? Uh, are you asking yourself, who can I talk to? Are you asking, where can I turn? Uh, are you unable to see anything but problems? Are you just seeing the chaos? Are you just seeing the trouble that's around us and the messiness in the political landscape? Are you finding a difficult time to pray, to find comfort or a perspective or hope or order? And if you are, I want to help you this evening and the next few weeks to see the bigger picture. That's your takeaway for this evening, seeing the bigger picture. Uh, everything now is a matter of perspective. And if you want to know why you were created, if you want to know why you're still here and why God has placed you on this planet, then you must begin with God because you were born with this purpose. You were born with something on God's mind for you. So simply put, life begins with God and life ends with God. And somehow you've got to learn how to sandwich them in the middle of your life. And yet, my brothers and sisters, in this time of perspective, and when we look at perspective, perspective can be defined as a particular attitude toward a way of regarding something or a point of view. And so it is when it comes to life, when it comes to the good in life, when it comes to the bad times in life, it is a matter of perspective. Will you say that with me? A matter of perspective. And what's on your plate today? What's on your plate this month? What's on your plate uh, for uh, this time in COVID-19, whether it's laid off, whether it's being furloughed, or whether it's how I'm going to pay the rent, how I'm going to make ends meet, uh, whether it's not being able to function in a normal capacity as you would be able to function in before COVID-19. Do you see only the confusion because you're so close to everything that's happening. And we all are, as pastors are not able to assemble their congregations and, and they're wondering, when do we go back? Should we go back? Uh, businesses now are having people stay at home for the rest of the year, uh, not knowing when they're going to reopen. And businesses uh, are shutting down, not able to survive in the comeback. So we see the overwhelming immensity of everything and our own smallness in comparison to all the chaos and the turbulence that's going on right now. Or do we see our inability to either solve it or let it alone conquer it or try to fix it? Uh, it's essence, in, in, in essence, it can be very overwhelming being up close. And we're all close to our situations. I'm close to mine. You're close to yours. But when you look at perspective, it means to look through to the end. And that's what you need to see the bigger picture and ask God to ask, help you see the perspective to the end. I, I've learned something very helpful in my spiritual discipline on my faith journey. And I've asked God to give me his perspective of the long view and the forward look. Two things, the long view and the forward look. I need your perspective, God. I find myself being, uh, during the course of a week, during the course of a day, looking up and saying, God, what is your perspective? How are you seeing this? I need you to help me see 
this thing through and not be sidetracked by what's before me because I'm so up close. And yet in the events that happen in our life, I am so thankful and asking God to give me his perspective, to take the long view back of the events in my life and the forward look ahead to what is ahead. So I believe that it does wonders for our perspective when we regularly shake ourselves out of our introspective pity parties. And I'm telling you, it's easy to get into that pity party. And it's, before you know it, you have shifted into depression. You have shifted into trying to fix it, trying to solve it, and the frustration and the anxiety. I shared with you on just a few weeks ago how that uh, it started getting warm in the house and uh, had the company come out that normally services our air conditions. And the man came out and he came back in and he said, I got bad news for you. And it was hanging his head. And he said, they're both are gone. They won't even hold free on. There's nothing that we can do to fix it. You're gonna have to get two units. And I said, well, how much is that gonna cost? And he said, $7,500. And I'm saying, okay, I don't have $7,500. And um, I said, okay, God, you've always had me. And I know you got me. You're gonna provide, you're gonna make a way. And he said, we're about 30 days out before we can do anything. And he said, we won't be able to do anything till about 30 days. And I said, by faith, go on and put me on the docket for the 30 days. And little did I know that, that God would have come through in the fashion that he came through. I mean, I knew it was coming through when I say little did I know. That's not that I had doubt or had any fear. I just didn't know how I was gonna do it. I know I couldn't do it. And yet at the same time, God had provided and uh, from anonymous source, $3,500 came in, and I'm thinking I got $3,500, but then I've got to come up with the balance, which is $4,000, and uh, someone said to me, go talk to them, sit there, work with you. When I talked to the owner of the company, he says, yes, I'll work with you. Give me what you got, and I'll give you so many days to pay the rest of it. Well, that was God's perspective, and sometimes we're shouting and we're singing and we're preaching about a God, how we're going to trust him, but if you never have situations and circumstances show up that's beyond your resources, that's beyond your need, then you won't know that God could solve it. You won't know that he could fix it. So I don't take it as an indictment that I didn't have it, amen, but it would be an indictment that I didn't have it and the fact that I would not look to God who was promised to provide all of my needs. That was a need. And I'm telling you, for those few weeks that we were in that house, uh, it was very, very uncomfortable in there. But thank God for the coolness. Thank God for the air condition that's on now. So I believe that when we look up and we ask God to give us from his perspective on our view and his view from both directions. So let's look at, for example, a piece of a puzzle. Let's look at a puzzle. And all of you pretty much are familiar with puzzles. And pieces of a puzzle are assembled one by one. And you get a clear picture that begins to emerge once you begin to put this piece with that piece and that piece with this piece. And yet each piece has been strategically designed to be placed in a certain place. And yet before you know it, the puzzle takes form and the bigger picture soon gets revealed. Life's like that. It's like the puzzle. Only if you fit the pieces to the right places will you see the beauty of that puzzle. Many times like a puzzle, the pieces of our life are hard to piece together, uh, but beautiful when all the right pieces are put together. And so it is with our life. Only God knows where the end result will look like. And so let the pieces be put together by God as you learn to submit to his placings. There are times things don't make sense to us, a lot of times. We don't know how to connect the dots. But if our trust is in God, when we can't see his hand, trust the plan, he has a way of connecting the pieces. And when we stand back from it and not be so close to it, we can see how the hand of God was moving and articulating and manipulating things on our behalf. Years ago, there was a song that was sang, and I love that song, and you don't hear it too much anymore, but it said something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful out of my life. And yet something beautiful is what God is going to bring out of situations such as what we're dealing with in these turbulent times. He alone knows how to connect the pieces and he knows how to connect the good, the bad, the ugly, and don't forget about the pretty. God brings all of that together to bring you to a complete man of maturity and a complete woman of maturity. And I've been saying week after week to you, 
And I've been reminding you in times of uncertainty, know what you have access to. It is in these times that people are asking, what is next? Uh, there are high levels of stress, high levels of frustration, high levels of anxiety and fear all over the world. It, everywhere you turn, all across the board, you can feel it. People are full of it. And stress is all about mental and emotional strain. That's what stress is. It's a state of mental and emotional strain resulting from demanding circumstances. And is that not where we all are? As men, as women, as families, as business owners, we are in the middle of demanding circumstances. As pastors of ministries, the challenges of the unforeseeable future are unpredictable. What do you mean unpredictable? That we never know what we're gonna wake up to. We never know from one morning to the next what's going to be tweeted by our president. Uh, we never know of the next place tragedy is going to hit. We never know if the numbers are going up, if the numbers are going down. Things are erratic, they're impulsive, they're fickle, and the list goes on. Crazy and fickle stuff all on social media. Nothing seems to be stable anymore. And yet, my friends, I can remember the quote, from Ronald Reagan, and I believe that Ronald Reagan really saw the bigger picture of what was ahead. And he said, if we ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. Now we are a nation for some time now with a leadership crisis. Yes, that's where we are in a leadership crisis, but I still believe that God has plans for America. And before the enemy and his demonic forces will take us under. God will triumph over the enemy because God has the trump card. Don't forget, God has the trump card. In this COVID-19 pandemic with numbers rising already in over 32 states with the threat of another possible shutdown in various cities and states across America, staring us right in the face right now after premature in many places reopenings and now the threatening of another shutdown it's not looking good for us right now. For many people, the atmosphere is full of uh, great levels of fear, levels of worry and stress. Many American families are wondering, will my kids be able to go back to school this fall? And yet there are those that are saying, how do we get this done? How do we really work this? Over 40 million Americans that are unemployed and the number is increasing. Employers are furloughing and laying off and people are having to shut down their businesses because they're not being able to bounce back from the economic downturn. So when fear or worry are more than temporary, when the anxiety does not go away, and when the anxiety gets worse over time, these are all signs of a crisis that may be around for a long time. And I'm saying again and again, God is our only option. I'm saying to all believers, build your altars because you're gonna need them like never before with what is ahead of us. You need to know right now, you need a total dependence upon the Almighty God to hold you and hold your family together. And so it is with this double whammy that we've been hit with, COVID-19. Now they're saying there's a new strand that's targeting children, that's targeting young adults. And yet we got Racism 20 that we're dealing with, where the embers left from slavery have now been fueled again by the inept leadership of the free world of our nation. Everyone is feeling this nervousness, this anxiousness, this being on edge, being frightened and worried at some point or time. None of us are enjoying feeling like this. I don't enjoy it, and I'm for sure you don't enjoy it. But may I remind you, from a God perspective, see the bigger picture. See that God will take a crisis to work something in you, to work something in us, to work something out of you, and to work something in you. God wants to work some things in us and work some stuff out of us. And the thing about God is God is more interested in our character than he is our comfort. And my friend, if you're looking to be comfortable in a situation like we're in right now and laid back as if there's no concerns and nothing to pray about, I want to wake you up real quick. This is not the time to be comfortable. This is the time to fight for the injustices, to fight for justice and fight again injustice. This is the time to hold on to the word of God and know that God is a God of justice and God is a God of judgment. You can't be comfortable and you can't be laid back because God wants to build something in us, people of God. He wants to build something in you in a time like this. And those that don't know God, he wants to take this crisis to cause them to turn to him who is the hope 
and who is the peace and who is the joy in a time like this. So God will be building something in you. So understand, it might be unpleasant. And these feelings might be as most of us can cope effectively with a certain level of it. Uh, certain situations, we evoke them and, and we're good. And yet for the believers, depending upon your spiritual maturity and depending upon your level of understanding of the word of God, um, you may determine where you are on that scale from one to 10. And yet you can assume that everybody is on the same scale or at the same place, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and psychologically. However, for some people, these feelings can be so intense they can be so intrusive that they interfere with the life and happiness of a person. There are millions out there, millions, where the whole world, they feel, has been turned upside down. And for many, there is no recourse. They see no combat. And they are literally asking in a time like this, what are my options? What is my alternative? What route do I take now? When I speak of anxiety, what do you mean? Uh, a state of arousal that is subjectively experienced as aversive or unfavorable situations or unfavorable circumstances or consequences. The air is full of it. The people are full of it. Anxiety is everywhere. Frustration is all around us. And in addition to anxiety, usually includes feelings of apprehension, of uncertainty, and or fear, as well as negative thinking. Clearly, anxiety is not something people enjoy or want to experience. It can be very uncomfortable. And right now that's where we all are in a very uncomfortable and very unpleasant circumstance. Take some comfort in the fact that there is a source. Glory to God. There is a source you and I can go to in a time such as this. That source is our creator. It is the almighty God who created this beautiful world who created the sun and the moon and the trees and the beautiful flowers that you see that spoke things into existence. That is our source. And I promise you, after promise, after promise, after promise. Do you remember what a promise means? Just the word promise. It means a declaration or assurance that one will do a particular thing or a particular thing will happen. That's what a promise means. Well, let me tell you what our God said in Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, shall he not make it good? That's a promise. It worked for the great cloud of witnesses in the Old Testament times. It worked for our ancestors and brought them through 400 years plus of slavery. And even through this ugliness and rottenness at the beginning of this nation. And he, God, will continue to walk us through. He is going to walk us through as we deal with the dark side of the nation, as we deal with the ugly systemic racism, America's original sin that's still present among us. It never went away. More of it just came out of hiding. Trust me, God will deal with this sin. And trust me, God will deal with America with judgment and justice. They both go hand to hand. Anytime you read in scripture, you'll see the word justice, you'll see judgment. You'll see judgment, you'll see justice because they both go hand in hand. Even Washington, even Capitol Hill, even Donald Trump, even Mike Pence. Nobody gets a pass with God. God will be a judge and God will judge those in leadership by a higher standard. But Romans 2 and 12 says, for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many that have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. So let me say to you again, friend, there is a bigger picture. Just know, just know this, that God will use even the enemy to work his plan in the earth. Don't get sidetracked because you see the enemy raising his head and it looks like that he is uh, taking the lead and it looks like that he is going to be in control forever. Before the enemy can destroy what God has purposed, God will turn around and destroy the works of the enemy so his plan can prevail. With the growing outcry, with the systemic racism since the killing of George Floyd, the two black men found hanging from a tree in California, and the list goes on. Close to home, the message that was sent to our neighboring city, the mayor of Kansas City, Missouri, a few days ago, Mayor Quentin Lucas, after masking and, and asking that uh, masks be a mandatory for the safety and health of the people. And yet it is obvious that some are either ill-informed 
or desire to remain in their ignorance of blatant racism or marinate in their souls in, in, in hatred. Mayor Lucas tweeted screenshots of the messages a constituent sent him over the citywide mass requirement. And it said in a one-sided exchange, the messenger called the Kansas City mayor the N-word and said he'd love to see Lucas swing from a tree. I'll tell you this, I've learned a long time ago, your soul's like a sponge. Remember this, your soul's like a sponge. Whatever you give it to, whatever you meditate on, whatever you love, whatever you hate, when you, the squeeze is put on you, what's in you is going to come out of you. How you feel is going to come out. If it is in there and the pressure hits, how you really feel about me is going to come out and it's going to be revealed. I know that we are in a time and none of us have ever lived through anything like this. But what I do know, and what I do know right now, without any doubt in my mind, that the God I serve has a track record. He's got a track record all through the scriptures. He's got a track record with me personally. And I am sure that there are many of you, come on, make a comment, give me a thumbs up, send me a heart. There are many of you out there that are saying, God has a track record with me also. But there is a bigger picture to all of this. If you can see the bigger picture, and it's an attitude that can change your life forever. I want to reflect on the words of Isaiah in Isaiah 43 and verse, in Isaiah 46 rather, and verse 10. He said, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. I want to read that from the HCSB translation. It says, I declare the end from the beginning and from long ago, what is not yet done, hear that, what is not yet done, saying my plan will take place and I will do all my will. That's a confirmation that we have in consolation. In other words, I've walked this thing out. God's saying, I already know how it's gonna end. God is saying, I already know what the end's gonna be. And if we keep our heads in the book and follow along in the book during a time like this, I've already told you, God is saying, my children, I told you how it's going to end. What God said to Israel, I believe, is for us today. Isaiah 61 and 7. Instead of shame and dishonor, you shall have a double portion of prosperity and everlasting joy. Don't that make you want to shout right now? Don't that make you want to give God a praise right there? In other words, shame will not be your portion. You ought to tell somebody next to you, shame won't be your portion. Text somebody, tell them shame won't be your portion. Make a comment to the other person that's commenting. Tell them shame will not be your portion. Don't wait till the battle's over. That's the song they sing. Shout now, because we know in the end, we're going to win. So when you're feeling down and discouraged, don't wait till the battle's over. Know that you already know how it's going to end. I want to remind you, and I'm laughing at the devil uh, as what he's trying to do in the earth right now. And I'm saying to myself and others, can't nobody fight like our God? Yes, we're protesting, rightfully so. It's our right to do that. And yes, we are going to vote. Yes, we're going to wear our masks. Yes, we're going to do social distancing. But when it comes in the spiritual realm, can't nobody fight like God. I'm going to pray while he fights. And as we fight, as we do what we are supposed to do, know that God is the righteous judge. And yet God says to us during this dark time, I'm just here to walk you through. I've already finished this thing from the end back to the beginning, from the beginning to the end. I just came back to walk you through what I've already done. And yet just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not completed. And just because you don't know it doesn't mean God doesn't know it. And just because you, it seems like your enemy has the upper hand on you doesn't mean that he's going to walk off with the victory. And just because it's not in your hand doesn't mean it's not coming. Just because you're furloughed, just because you're laid off doesn't mean that God has something else for you. Learn how to trust him even in your wilderness. Learn how to trust him in between the doors that are waiting to open. Someone said, I know you said that God has another door open, but it's hell in the hallway. Trust him in the hell in the hallway and to know that God will give you peace in the midst of the hell in the hallway waiting on the next door to open. I want to close with this in Luke 1 and 37. And it says, for no word from God will ever fail. My plan will take place, God says, and I will do all my will in Isaiah 46 and 10. You want to read that this week. Hold on to it for the rest of the month because we'll be feeding off that. So see the bigger picture of the things that there's something you can learn even in the midst of a crisis. <clears throat> One thing we can control in this new environment is our commitment, is to learn from 
our experiences and learn from the experiences of others. Many philanthropic organizations are responding to COVID-19 by developing rapid response, funding mechanisms, resources, and revised grant policies. Overnight, organizations, including ministries across the board, have required staff and others to make extremely fast decisions and implement new policies and practice almost overnight. We here in ministry had to make some extremely fast decisions, but thank God because we were up on our technology. Thank God because we had vision before we saw this coming. We were pretty much prepared to be able to bring to you ministry in the fashion that we're bringing to you. So I want you to take this away this evening. What do I learn in all of this? There's much for all of us to learn in a time like this. And I will go as far to tell you that God's not trying to tell us something. God is telling us something. To see the bigger picture, you start by asking yourself, what's my part in this? Ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, show me my part in the scheme of things. That's my prayer, that all of us will say, God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Let me just say personally, you know, I've been asking God, uh, God, what is my part? As I'm going to ask him, what's your part? And, and I believe your obedience to your assignment in this season is key to the releases in all fronts of your life. Your obedience, your talents, giving them to the kingdom, even now. Your giftings, giving them to the ministry service. Your finances to help further the cause. Your love into the lives of others. Your peace into the lives of others. The more willing you are to trust him, for everything and doubting for nothing, even in the darkness of this world, in the pandemic, the glory of God will rise upon you. There's a bigger picture. God has always set himself up for the glory to be revealed. And he's already told you as a child of God, <clears throat> you can never be defeated. So my friend, trust the God of the scriptures. Trust the one that the fire can burn it, the water can drown it, and the grave can hold it. Who do you know has a record like this? As a church, as a people of faith, we're not to be foolish in our thinking because our duty is gonna require us to stand sound in our minds and trust the God of the scriptures. I remember the life and legacy of the 41st president, President George Henry Walker Bush, who even as a young man saw the bigger picture for his life and on one of the outside walls of the Bush Library in College Station, Texas, and Texas A&M, the words from his January 29th, 1991 State of the Union address are engraved. And he said this, let the future generations understand the burden and the blessing of freedom, and let them say we stood where duty required us to stand. That is what you do when you see the bigger picture of our country. You stand as duty requires. So if you look through the scriptures, you'll see God is a God of justice and a God of judgment. And no king and no leader, even in the scriptures, could withhold the hand of God from justice or judgment. So my brothers and sisters, until the next time, know that God has a plan for you. God has a plan for us. And you ask him, God, what is my part in this? And as God shows you your part, walk in obedience to him and know that God has got you and know that you matter to God. Will you pray with me? I want to make an invitation. If you don't know Jesus and you haven't accepted him as your personal savior, see the bigger picture of what he wants to do in your life. And my friend, if you just say with me and repeat after me, dear God, I want to be a part of your family. You said in your word that if I acknowledge that you raised Jesus from the dead and accept you as my Lord and savior, I would be saved. So today I now say that I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead, that he is alive and he will live in me. I accept him as my personal Savior and Lord. Say that. I accept him salvation right now. I am now saved and Jesus is my Lord and Jesus is my Savior. Thank you, God, for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you for saving me and giving me eternal life with you. In Jesus' name, I receive that life. Amen. Now, I want to pray another prayer with you. And my prayer is that all this month, all this week, you'll see the bigger picture. So will you join me in prayer? Dear God, we need a fresh hope from you and a new perspective. Not only at the beginning of a new, not only at the beginning of this pandemic that we're dealing with in COVID-19 and this COVID, uh, this racism 20, but God, we need you now like never before. 
And what we see today, what we're unable to see many times, but the problems, the troubles and chaos and the messiness that's all around us. I pray, God, that you give us a heavenly perspective on this life. Help us not to be distracted by the things of the world, but to constantly turn our gaze toward you. Help us to have perspective and to see with clear eyes both the hardships and the blessings of our lives. And Lord, as we are tempted to despair over hardships, remind us that you never let us go through trouble without gifting us a measure of your goodness, of your grace, of your peace, and of your love. So as we reflect on our blessings, you've been faithful and you've been good. Help us bless others. Help us to be givers in a time such as this. Give us all the right perspective on the life we have, which is a gift from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Until the next time, know you matter. I want you to do something. I want you to plant a seed of at least $20. Last, last week, uh, we didn't ask you to plant anything, but this week, I'm asking you to plant a seed. If you've been listening wherever you are across the world, and it has been a blessing on Tuesday evenings to you, will you plant that seed and say, yes, Bishop, I'll plant that seed of $20 to help further the ministry and to help keep our production team up and running and doing what they do so well, bringing to you ministry through technology. Again, you matter and God's got you.